have you ever come across uh, the word or this this phrase the finger of god have you ever come across this phrase so today we're going to be speaking about the finger of god so that you can understand exactly what it is and where it was used so we understand the finger of god is uh, found about four times in the in the bible uh, two is it four yes three times in the old testament and one time in the new testament it is synonymous with the supernatural power of god as it directly impacts the events in the world okay the first reference to this finger of god is found in the book of exodus where Mo moses has just an unleashed the third plague of egypt in an effort to force Pharaoh to flee the Israelites who had been held captive for about 400 years. You know the story. And uh, the Lord instructed Moses to tell Aaron uh, to stretch out his staff um, and strike the dust of the earth so that there may come lies okay, in all the land of Egypt. We can call them lice or we can call them nuts. Okay, depending on how you understand and how you, you get the point. So le let's see from, from the book of uh, Exodus um, 8 verse 16. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice through all the land of Egypt. Lice is those small insects which uh, you know they, they get into animals and people at, at times. And they did so. So Aaron stretched out his hand with the rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast, and all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Okay, that's a miracle. And the magicians also, <laughs> they tried to do the same thing. Look at verse 18. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but what happened? They could not. They couldn't do this. There were lies upon man and upon beasts. So now, verse 19 gives us a picture of what really these people, they said. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, mm -hmm, look at this. This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. <laughs> you see, the Lord had said, this is my finger. This is my finger. Hey, I'm warning you. I'm warning you, Pharaoh. Do as as I tell you. If you'll not do it, you're going to see it big. You know, it's going to see a, a very bad story ahead. But uh, also, likewise, we see the second story uh, or the second reference to the finger of God also occurs in the book of Exodus, likewise, where the phrase is used about the tablets of uh, the, the tablets of stone which were given to Moses. And uh, these tablets contain the covenant law. The covenant law, do you, do you remember that? And uh, this covenant law, they were inscribed by the finger. Okay, again, we come back to the same thing. Exodus 31 verse 18 it was also the finger of god which wrote those tablets you think there are, pe there are people who think that the laws were just uh, put there by man yeah? it's like man who just no it's just moses who went there and scripted something no it's the finger of god which did this look at this and he gave unto moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon mount sinai two tables of testimony tables of stone written with the finger of God is like God was saying this is me I'm, I'm I'm giving you this Moses this I've given you this Moses so that you can go and give it to the people I've written them with my finger are you seeing the point here so Moses relates to an account of the same incidents also in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse uh, 10 okay Deuteronomy 9 uh, verse 10 okay he also accounts the same thing he says and the lord delivered me and uh, unto me two tables of stone written with the finger of god the finger of god and on them on them was written according to all the words which the lord spake with you in the mount out of the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly you see so it is not to be supposed to be that God literally touched the tablets, but uh, because 
God is spirit and of course if he's spirit then definitely he has no fingers. Rather, but the phrase finger of God is an anthropomorphism. Okay, I've used this word before. It's really hard, a very hard word. Anthropomorphism indicating that God directly caused the commandments to be engraved upon a stone. And uh, if you ever watched the 1956 movie, uh, which is called the Ten Commandments, you can you can see you can see a, a scene whereby they try to depict uh, the writing coming as from a finger. Okay, it's like a finger of fire, which is probably uh, as good as rendering the actual act. Okay, the actual act, if 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 there was any. All right if God literally did this, but we know, of course, God is spirit. However, God accomplished it. Uh, the letters were devised and formed by him, and the writing was his, okay? So the words and the letters, the idea, the the whole script was, was God. It was basically him himself uh, writing those uh, words and giving also the commandments, okay? So uh, you have to understand that uh, God accomplished this and the the letters they were formed by him literally he wrote those things and uh, the engraving of the stone was done by his power and his might because how could be able to engrave a stone and you know remove it <laughs> it's not like Moses went there with something and trying to no God did it by his own power and now when you come to the New Testament, the New Testament whereby mm -hmm. the reference to the finger of God is from Jesus himself. It's like Jesus was putting a stamp on his word, okay? After freeing a blind and mute man from a demon, Jesus said unto his critics, If I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Look at this. Uh, I always like to show the verses in the book of Luke. Uh, Luke uh, 11 verse 20, it tells us about this, 11:20. it says, but if, but, if with, but if I with the finger of God cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is upon you. You see? Because it means if I'm casting demons by the finger of God, then it means I am God. I am the promised Messiah. I'm the king of kings who was promised. So the kingdom of God is here with you. But you people, you're still blind. You cannot see. You see the point? And in a parallel passage, the phrase, the spirit of God, rather than the finger of God, is mentioned in uh, Matthew 12, verse 28. Matthew uh, 12, verse 28. Okay? And speaking about the same. Uh, but if I cast out devils by the spirit of God, you see, the finger of God can also be explained as the spirit of God because this, Jesus was not doing this by the spirit of Beelzebub, like the way they were saying, or, or by something else. It was by the spirit of God. And that's why he says, if it is by the spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is upon you, has come upon you. So in both accounts, the meaning is that Jesus performed miracles by the overt power of God, the same power that caused the nuns or the lice uh, to swim and, and the writings to appear on the tablets of stone. And the finger of God, that finger of God, okay, let me just uh, look for a nice one here. Yes, that finger of God, this finger of God, is uh, a reference to God's unlimited power. God has a lot of power, unlimited power, as he intervenes directly in the affairs of men. He can cause lies to come. He can write the, uh, the, his laws on a tablet. He can heal the sick using his finger. He can save people. And uh, the working of the finger of God is uh, unmistakable. It can do so many things. So no device of man can, com can, can compete with that power. Even the heathen magicians they came and they recognized Moses way and they told Pharaoh this is actually the finger of God this this is not this is not human this is not Moses this is not Aaron is the finger of God and you know the same God can save you and that's the God who you're supposed to look upon 
if you're still out there and you're not saved and you have not ever believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ, please do so because time is right and time is moving and you have to believe the gospel because without the gospel, everything is futile. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding that uh, Christ died for your sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he did this for you so that you may have life and have it abundantly. All you need to do is understand this fact that Jesus did not die for nothing. He died so that you can have eternal life. All you need to do is put your focus and all your your your, your mind and soul and heart on and, and faith. In Jesus Christ don't focus on other things or say maybe I'll do this I'll do that or I'll do that so that they can get eternal life no eternal life comes from knowing Jesus and all you need to do is understand that fact and confess it to him confess what you have believed because uh, we don't uh, confess what we don't know we confess what we know from our hearts out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh you tell Jesus Jesus now I understand that you died for my sins you were buried and rose again as is written in the scriptures. And so once you do that, my friends, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Hope this has been a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this video, please you can share, subscribe, and also uh, check out the description below. We have other channels outside YouTube, on Facebook, uh, uh, on uh, Instagram also, uh, on BitChute and all that. And also we have a special uh, podcast that we started. Please go and check it out. Uh, there is a link of our podcast. We have so many Bible studies that we try to do each and every time. Please go and check them out. And uh, God bless you and have a blessed time.